Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my messy desk. Um, so today I just wanted to make a short tutorial about how to set up uh, your BCR2000 uh, Behringer uh, MIDI controller with uh, Native Controls uh, a DDC script. So that allows you to like dynamically change what this is like what this is uh, controlling based on what ch uh, channel you have selected in Ableton. Um, so anyway, the first step is you will download uh, a zip file after you purchase it, and it'll have these items in it. Um, the There's the TXT README, which just tells you what to do, and then there's this uh, .py uh, file, which you'll upload to DDC later. Uh, and then there's the sysx file, which is something you actually need to uh, send to the uh, BCR2000. Um, so that is changing some of the settings for the knob so that um, DDC can like get the right signals. Um, so anyway, the first step is to go and open up uh, this program called MIDIOX. Um, which is great for sending uh, SysX messages and stuff. Um, oh, okay, so in this case, um, my uh, BCR2000 is uh, not turned on, so you see it doesn't show up here, so I'm just going to quit. Uh, MIDI aux can't, uh, like, recognize MIDI devi devices you turn on after it's already initialized. Uh, so you'll have to exit first, and then um, I'm going to go in the back here, turn this on, okay? And you'll see that um, uh, this light is on under USB mode. Uh, it's important that you actually have it set to the correct USB mode. There's a whole bunch of different modes on here uh, that change, like, how it... Uh, sends MIDI and how it shows up and stuff like that. Um, so you have to make sure that you set it to uh, operating mode U1. Okay, and you set that, you op switch it to operating mode U1 by um, pressing edit and then store. Uh, and then using the first encoder, so that's this encoder here, you rotate that until it says U1. Uh, and that's the like most basic uh, like USB mode where it just sends and receives, like it sends MIDI to the computer and it receives MIDI from the computer and it doesn't do anything with the like five pin MIDI jacks on the back. And if you're using it for DDC, you're probably not also trying to multitask it and make it do a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so generally, it's a good idea to just uh, put it in uh, U1. So anyway, once you have it in U1 and you see this light on, uh, then you're in business. And like we did before, I'm going to start up MIDI aux. Cool, and then you're going to see something like this, where it's like input port is just the event port out of MIDI aux, and the output port is your BCR2000. And uh, if it isn't like that, uh, you can go up to Window, what is it, Options, and then MIDI Devices, and then you'll see uh, these are your like your inputs here. You don't need anything selected there. Um, but you want to make sure that this is clicked where it says BCR2000. So you just click it and then it shows up there. And then you can save this as a profile if you want. And then you'll see I have some different profiles here. So I have one for the uh, profile that's just the BCR and that's that connection. So anyway, I'll just hit cancel because I already have it set up right. Okay, cool. So then... The next step you're going to do, and I'm not going to do this because I don't want to funk, funk it up, but you're going to go to uh, ba, 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 let's see, window, then sysx, and then from there you're going to go to sysx, configure, and these are the settings that worked for me. Uh, you might be able to crank down the output timing 
you wanted it to go faster, but it's really fine. You don't need to do that. Um, but yeah, so you just set that correctly. Uh, as it says here, hit OK. Then you're going to go File, Send SysX File. And then you're going to navigate to that folder you got from Native Control where it says BCR2000, DDC Preset SysX. Okay, now be careful because as soon as you double click this or you go and you click open, it will start sending it. <laughs> like it's not, it starts sending as soon as you confirm that. So just be aware of that. Make sure you have everything else set up before you do this step. So anyway, when it does that, it, a bunch of data will start streaming on this screen here. We'll just start streaming down. And then you'll see up here, on the uh, five digit, the the segment display here, you'll see it like cycling around in a circle. Like the the lines will like cycle around, and that means that um, you're correctly like sending the it's recognizing the MIDI data, um, the SysX data, uh, and it's updating the preset so that everything will work. So once you've done that, uh, the README kind of tells you what to do next. So if we look at the README, uh, bum, bum, bum. let's see. Okay, yeah, so it will finish the transfer. So once it's done with the transfer and this uh, MIDI aux thing stops streaming down, then you press the store button and then use the preset buttons to navigate so you can put it in any of the like the preset slots. Um, so that that preset would be the one that like responds to DDC. And I guess theoretically you could have the, all the other presets be for other stuff. Uh, like if you wanted to use the BCR for whatever other functions. Like if you wanted one that was just like MIDI mappings that weren't dynamic or something like that. Um, but anyway, here you're just selecting the... Um, you're going to press the preset buttons here, these two, and it'll say like P1, P2, whatever, whatever. So you're going to choose which preset is going to be like used for DDC. So I just used uh, preset one in this case. Um, and then you press the store button again, and there we go. It's all like stored at that point. Um, and you're good to go. Uh, so then you're going to close MIDI aux cool um, and then uh, this is just Mac OS stuff if you're gonna do Mac OS I'm assuming it's pretty much the same but I haven't tested it uh, and then you have to do this last step this is pretty standard most of the DDC stuff requires you to upload like a Python script to the DDC app sometimes they make you uh, sometimes it makes you uh, do multiple uh, files, but anyway, so here we are. Okay, so then here it's asking you what script you want to edit. So each controller needs to have its own uh, like DDC profile, uh, like DDC script, and this shows up in Ableton too. You'll see like under the MIDI devices DDC1, DDC2, I think it goes all the way up to 6 or something like that. Um, so yeah, make sure that you select one that's empty. So in my case, uh, you know, I just chose number two because I'm using number one for my Novation uh, launch control. So anyway, so load that up, okay. And then uh, you'll see a page like this. By default, it just has like EQ8 controlled here. Um, but this will not work yet. You have to run the... Uh, you have to run the Python script. So you just do that by going file and then import and then you're just going to navigate you know to your folder with all the files in it and you're going to select the Python script and then hit open and that will uh, load uh, some settings I think into DDC um, that are specifically fixed some bugs and stuff with uh, the BCR. So anyway, uh, at that point, you're pretty much, you've got everything here set up. 
Um, so the next thing you need to do is set up things in Ableton, which is pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, let me show you that. So, oh, okay. So the, also when you do this, uh, after you upload the Python script, you have to shut down DDC and restart it. So it specifically says that in here. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, so it says here, you open it up, you import the Python file, and then you just need to uh, restart the editor. So, uh, yeah, so you shut down the editor and then restart it. Um, that's just a good idea to keep things moving, like make sure everything's all processed through before you start up Ableton. Um, and then another just note here, so kind of what they're saying here with like encoders 1 is group A, encoders 2 is group B, encoders 3 is group C, encoders 4 is group D. So, uh, so they're just saying like encoders 1, 2, 3, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4 is controlled by what you set up here on, you know, group A, group B, group C, group D. That's all they're saying there. And then here they're saying, okay, you know, the encoder buttons. So if we go over here to buttons, boop. So they're saying that th that group A is the like detent, like if you, the top row you can press down the button. So they're saying the top row is uh, this group A on here. And then the next row of buttons is uh, group B. And then the third row is group C. So you can see they're marked here as the groups A, B, and C. So when you do go in there to edit it, um, that's how it works. And then the other thing that they're saying here is that the these buttons here uh, on, it's just indicating that these buttons do other functions and so they're not mappable. So I have them labeled on here. So this, these buttons here are the DDC page. So you can have multiple pages within a DDC script. Uh, and then this will lock it to the track so it doesn't dynamically change like based on what track you have selected. It'll just lock to that track until you uh, unclick that. Um, so then that corresponds up here to these pages. So you can have up to eight pages. Um, okay, cool. And the, so the last step is, um, sorry, this shaky cam, uh, is to open up Ableton. And my Ableton takes forever to load. Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, generally, with these scripts and stuff, for some reason, your default Ableton set might not work correctly. Uh, and that's, I'm not sure why, but sometimes it won't recognize things properly. So what I generally do when I'm experimenting with, like, trying to get these scripts to work is immediately after I open it, I just go new set. And just reset it there. And for some reason, that fixes some issues. Uh... So anyway, that's just good practice in my experience is to just go new set immediately after you open it. Okay, so then you're going to go into your preferences here. And then you'll see I have a DDC2 up here. And then I have that set to BCR2000, BCR2000. And then it's the same thing here. I have the uh, track and the remote on for uh, both the input uh, and the output here. I gotta scroll down. But, uh, yeah, not sure why that's orange, but it is working. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, how you set it up. And, um, yeah, just to show it working. Um, so if I go to this channel and I put in uh, an EQ8, you can see 
I'm moving this knob and the EQ8 is moving because that's how it's uh, that's how it's mapped so um, yeah and you can control different things so you can set that up all custom in uh, DDC to control whatever you want dynamically so just to show kind of what the purpose of DDC is if I grab this EQ8 and I bounce over to uh, like another channel this one here so now this channel uh, Let's see, I'll move this, you know, so you can see that I'm doing different channels. So if I choose this channel, this channel, they're both different. I don't have any MIDI mappings at all in here. But if I go to this channel, I can move the knob here and I can change things about this uh, EQ. I can, uh, I think I can, oops, that's changing the shape, but. Let's see, uh, yeah, I can turn on more points, I can do whatever, you know, I can change whatever I want about the CQ. And then if I switch over to another channel, like if I go over here to this one, then I can move my knobs as well, and it's dynamically just picking up, um, you know, whichever one I'm working on. Um, there. So the real joy of that is that um, you can essentially like kind of have a channel strip. You can use this MIDI controller as kind of like a universal controller for settings on whatever channel you have selected, um, which really speeds up your workflow. Um, and you can do it with a bunch of different controllers. Like I use this launch control here um, as a channel strip for my drums. So I have a bunch of different effects on here, and I can turn them on and off using the buttons. Um, so, yeah, DDC is really, really cool. Um, and it can be a little tricky to set up at first, a little intimidating. Um, but once you have it set up, it uh, works really, really well. Um, so if you have any questions about that, um, the native control forums are probably your best bet. Uh, but you can also leave a comment here. Um, if you have some specific questions, uh, and yeah, that's about it. So, um, yeah, thank you so much.